So last time we were here, Artemy finished up the discussion on introducing the beginnings of machine learning. And today what we're going to talk about over the next couple of lectures is a case study in machine learning applied to a specific system. So board games have a very long history in AI going all the way back to the 1950s. And they were used to kind of drive the initial developments in artificial learning and machine intelligence. So why is it, why do we care about board games? Well, on the one hand, board games are this really isolated system where we know what it means to win, we know what all the moves are, and we kind of know the consequences of, the, of those actions. Unlike in the real world where things can be really complicated and messy, and people change and times change, and so it's hard to have a, a nice replicable system. Whereas in a board game, the rules of chess have been the same for hundreds of years. But also, board games have been this measure of what people think of as intelligent. And whether or not that's true, we can see there are many features of a board game that relate to the real world. So in particular, in this article but from Byte Magazine in 1978, we can see these features that are really important to playing a game. So you need to plan out a strategy to figure what moves you're going to make and how to execute them. You need to plan ahead to figure out what your goals are, both short term and long term. And then you need to be able to calculate how these moves are going to play out in order to execute a good plan. So we can see that while these features might be in their own specific ways in chess, they're actually the ki same kinds of things that we do in real world systems, making board games an ideal place to start trying to think about how to make machines do things that seem like they're intelligent. Computer scientists have been building machines to play board games now for a long time as well. So back in 1952, uh, the machine OXO uh, managed to play a perfect game of tic-tac-toe. Flashing forward, in 1995, the computer Chinook became the world champion in checkers. Now, uh, th technically, Chinook became the champion in a way that computers can, which is that humans are mortal. And in fact, the best human che checkers pl player, Marion Tinsley, actually passed away in the middle of their match. And Marion Tinsley was so much better than every other player that all of a sudden, Chinook became the world champion. But we'll never know if Chinook was better. Um, and then, m many of you may have heard, in 1997, Deep Blue beat Garry Kasparov, to, to, who was the world chess champion at the time. So we see that 1952 is tic-tac-toe, and then 1995, Checkers is beaten, and then 1997, chess, the computer becomes the world champion. So 1998, how were computers doing at Go? Well, if you see this board here, you might not know how the rules are, but the computer got to play 30 moves at the beginning of the game and still lost to a decent human, not even the world's best human. So you can see that it, the computers were the best player ever in chess, but still needed at least 30, 30 moves at the beginning of a Go game in order to beat top humans. So now let's take a minute, uh, Diversion, to talk about the rules of Go, and we'll talk about how it works. So first, let's talk about the history. So Go is very popular worldwide, but especially in East Asia. And there are over 30 million players throughout the world. And in fact, there are between four and six tournaments every year that have a prize winnings of over a quarter of a million dollars. Go is between 2,500 and 4,000 years old. And in fact, some of the oldest texts that we have about Go is the writings of Confucius. So Go has a very long history as well. So in particular, Go is a game, uh, it's a two-player game, so there's two players, but it's also deterministic, which means there's no randomness. So if you play something like poker, you don't know what card you're going to draw when you draw cards. Whereas in Go, you play a move and that's that. And it's also a game of perfect information, which means that both players know everything that's going on. So you could also imagine, say, a game about war, where there's a fog of war. So maybe you have pieces, but I don't know where those pieces are. And so Go is not that. It, every, everyone knows everything, which makes it a very nice system for machine learning, because we, we don't have any hidden information. So the way it works is, that, as I said, there are two players, black and white, and they alternate moves. The board is 19 points by 19 points, and players alternate playing on the intersections. The next idea is this idea of capturing. So if you have a group of stones that are connected by points, and they get surrounded entirely by stones of the opposite color, those stones are removed from the board.
Now black and white play back and forth, taking off stones if necessary if they get captured. And at the end of the game, we finally see who has surrounded the most territory. And so what we do is we count up the territory surrounded by both players, and then we count up the number of stones that you have captured, and whoever has the most points wins. So that's not all of the rules to go, but it's almost all of the rules to go, and will hopefully give you enough to, to moving forward to give you some sense of how the game plays. So going back to Computer Go, as I mentioned, back in 1998, computers were doing really, really poorly. And then around 2000, we finally had one of our first breakthroughs, which we'll talk later. But it, in 2004, a computer lost to a professional with a nine stone handicap, which is still a big handicap, but it's, it's much less than 30 stone handicap. And then t by 2010, we had decreased another two stone. So a computer beat a professional with a seven stone handicap. And then another five years, on, or five years later in 2015, a computer beat a professional with a five stone handicap. So from 2004 until 2015, so 11 year span, we decreased four stone handicap. A couple months later, in March of 2016, this program AlphaGo defeated Lee Se Dole, who was the, one of the top professionals at the time, with a zero stone handicap. So it took us 11 years to decrease four stones, and then in like three months, it went from five stones to beating one of the top professionals. And then a couple of months later, uh, the second version of the program, AlphaGo Master, beat the top professional, Ke Je, three to nothing. So the computer didn't even lose. And, and Kijay was one of the top players at the time. And then recently, a couple months ago, AlphaGo Zero came out and defeated the AlphaGo Master version 89 to 11. So it took us 11 years to break four stones, but now in the last year and a half, we've managed to like beat the top players and then beat programs that have beat the top players. So we've had this amazing level of progress. <laughs> 